Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the most important four characters you should build in Honkai Star Rail. These characters are given for free. Additionally, I will list four more free character options that you can consider building depending on what you have available in your account. Let's begin. The main character is very strong and versatile, an actual 5 star unit. The physical destruction role is excellent for both single target and multi target physical weakness enemies. Additionally, the technique ability to heal all allies for 15% of their respective max HP is useful, particularly in the simulated universe where it can be used between fights. The fire preservation role is also very good serving as a tank that can taunt enemies and increase the chances of being attacked. The fire MC also has a good AoE damage capabilities with its ultimate and enhanced basic attacks that become blast, hitting adjacent enemies. Overall, fire MC is an excellent tank that can handle fire element weakness enemies with ease. Fire MC is particularly useful in the Forgotten Hall where damage mitigation is critical since you can't dodge like in Genshin Impact, a healer or a tank is necessary for survival. Fire MC Eidolons improve tanking capabilities and personal damage and all Eidolons for the main character are free. Being able to swap elements is a significant advantage as it can be done within the simulated universe, allowing one character to cover multiple elements and roles by switching between fights. Dunhang is a wind hunt character who is extremely strong. He is the only hunt path unit that has a slow utility which is usually given to nihility path characters such as Welt. Slow is extremely important ability that can be used to slow enemies down and make your characters act faster than the enemy. Dunhang also has a very good single target damage making him excellent at dealing with many wind element weakness enemies, especially enemies such as exploding spiders, which can deal massive damage if they are not taken care of. His ultimate will have an increased multiplier if the enemies are slowed, which they will be due to his skill applying slow. In addition, his talent provides him with wind resistance penetration when he is targeted by an ally's ability, such as a heal or a buff. His Eidolons are also very strong, especially E4, where he will receive an advanced forward action by 100% if enemies are killed by his ultimate. Furthermore, E6 increases the slow percentage debuff even further. It's important to keep in mind that in this game, starter characters will be on rate up event banners, so getting idolons over time is likely to happen. Natasha is a physical abundance character and the only free healer available in the game. As mentioned earlier, it's essential to have a defensive option such as a healer or a tank, sometimes even both. Natasha's ultimate provides healing for everyone on your team while her skill is single target only. Upgrading traces can improve her skill giving her the ability to remove debuffs. This is extremely important utility that can help you in many situations especially against enemies with powerful debuffs like mind control or debuffs that increase damage received. Her idolons improve her survivability, increase healing for teammates and boost her own personal damage as well. If you happen to get Bailu, Natasha is still useful because you'll want a character with a cleanse and one healer on each side in the Forgotten Hall. Asta is a fire harmony character. Most of you are probably aware of her excellent ultimate ability which increases the speed of all your teammates for two turns. However, her skill is also very strong as it is a bouncing attack that can hit multiple enemies. If you are only fighting one enemy, the bounce will hit all the same target, reducing their toughness bar relatively quick. Her E1 Eidolon gives her an additional bounce on her skill, which also further improves her ability to break enemies quickly. She also has an attack buff for your wall team, which is decent as well. These are the four most important characters to build to help you progress through the game, even in the late game. I'll also list the other four 
characters that are given for free. Depending on whether you have alternatives available, some of these characters should also be built shortly after you build the first four. March 7 is an excellent ice preservation character. Her shield provides much needed survivability for your team and increases the chance of the shielded targets to get attacked. If they happen to get attacked, she'll perform a counter attack, which is an excellent way to charge her ultimate faster. Her ultimate is an AoE attack that has a 50% chance to freeze enemies. She also has the ability to remove debuffs from your teammates with her skill, which is a very nice utility to have. With Eidolons, she also gets the ability to moderately heal a target ally with her skill. Most importantly, she is the other free character besides Natasha that can remove debuffs from your allies. If you happen to get Gephard, you could use him instead of March 7. However, if you require cleansing utility, Gephard does not provide it. And sometimes in the Forgotten Hall, you might need cleanse on both sides. Hertha is a nice erudition character. She's an excellent AoE damage that's very effective against ice weakness enemies in a multi-target environment. However, her single target damage is not as impressive. You'll also get multiple copies of her from the simulated universe, meaning you'll have an E3 Hertha. If you already built March 7 or have other ice units built, they should be enough for your weakness breaking enemies of ice element weakness. Also, if you happen to get Himeko or Jing Wan, you could use those characters for multi-target fights instead. Serval is a lightning erudition character. Unlike Herta, she's the only lightning element character you are given for free. If you need to break enemies with lightning weakness and you don't have other lightning units available, you will have to build her. However, there are many alternatives to her that you can use. If you are planning to get Jing Wan, you will use him instead. Arlan also works great as a lightning damage dealer that also has multi-target capabilities. However, he requires more investment, such as having a Bailu to keep him alive consistently. Chinque is a quantum erudition character. She's the only quantum element that will be provided for free. Her kit has an RNG component where you need to draw tiles to improve her damage and turn it into a blast. However, her ultimate is a guaranteed multi-target attack and also turns her next basic attack into a blast attack, which will hit adjacent enemies. Whenever there is a fight with multiple quantum weakness enemies, she will be extremely effective. You might wonder why this character is not a must build as she has the alternative such as Sela who can take over her role in a multi-target quantum weakness fight. That would be all for this video, if you have any questions feel free to ask down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to check out my Twitch stream where I stream Honky Star Rail daily and also check out our Discord community where you'll be able to talk with fellow players. Links to both provided in the description down below. Take care and have a wonderful day.